last one for the night, too. We got a bomb meal. Now, we need a coop for the feet. But anyway, I wanted to leave you on a good note. I wanted to talk about, well, something that's, well, now happily in the news. But, well, has been the news for, like, centuries upon centuries upon centuries on this planet. Well, there's more bad things happening from east of us. Well, east of us. In the Middle East, as they call it. Specifically, in the Jewish state known as Israel back in 1948. And you know, these bad things, they keep happening. It's really kind of like a compounding effect. And you gotta stop and think, well, are they happening to teach us a lesson? Or are they happening, well, because, well, the same crew is always in charge. And when you know, I'm starting to think that it's the latter and not the former. Anyway, well, this conflict started right around the independence of Israel, or the date that Israel gained its independence. And, you know, that all happened in 1918. No, Israel didn't become a state until 1948. But, well, the treaty that established Israel as becoming a state happened in 1918 by the British Empire. They decreed it. And, well, when you know, if you ruled three-fourths of the planet, you could decree anything. And, well, it happened. And you're like, well, how does that happen so without? Well, if you're not shooting the gunpowder horizontally, and you learn how to shoot it vertically, your decrees are met with. Or, well, you just don't, you just don't, well, you're just not here anymore. Anyway, so the British Empire decreed that the state of Israel would, well, be established as condition upon the end of the First World War. You know, everybody is like criticizing the state. But it's not so simple in nature. It's a lot more complex and nuanced. Because, well, what you see you gotta roll with. And what you don't see you gotta roll with. Everybody's saying that, well, this is Israel versus Palestine. And, well, on the surface, if you're clueless and ignorant, you would go along with them and kind of assumption like that. But is it really Israel versus Palestine? Or is it the people of Israel? Is it the people of Palestine who are conducting this conflict? Or is it something more insidious and centralized and something very small in nature that's conducting the conflict but made to appear as though it's the people? That's what you should really be asking. You know, the vast majority of the Israelis and the vast majority of Palestinians, they get along with each other. They have no issues. You know, it's the governmental structure. It's the nation state. And seeing as Palestine, well, it's not a state. It's working towards a state, true state solution. Well, you have no, well, governance structure. You have nobody really in charge because, well, Palestine, well, it's being colonized and settled by Israel. That's what Israel really is, a settler state, much like the United States of America and most Western nations. You know, at some point, somebody settled everything. And when you know people went to war and fought wars, and whoever won the war took the land, took all the possessions, the gold, you know, everything. Everything belonged to the victor. That's where the saying comes from, from to the victor go the spoils of war, something like that. Well, anyway, when you know, the Israelis or the Jewish people, they never really had to fight anybody in their actual state. They just were, well, decreed to be there. And well, when you know, that decree was based off of, well, nobody else wanted the Jewish people anywhere else. And well, Israel's always got sort of kind of been right, well, the best way to put it is insurance. Kind of like insurance as in, well, if what happened in the Second World War ever were to happen again, well, Israel would be the place that Jewish people would go and well hide and not be, well, 
put into gas chambers again. Since nobody wants to be put into a gas chamber or skinned alive like what happened during the Holocaust. So, Mom, to get people a safe, and Mom, if things go really, really bad, then they can run their brothers really quickly. And Mom, that was the contractual agreement that, Mom, you know who the powers to be came up with. And Mom, it's a good agreement. It can negate the people that actually live on the land that where they are prior to, well, the settler colony. So it's kind of like Turtle Island, where the Americans or the Anglo-Saxons, well, screw the indigenous people. We need the land to colonize it. And it's no longer going to be called Turtle Island. It's going to be called America, after America's Vespucci, who discovered the new world. The only problem is you can't discover something as something that already exists and people are already there. They discovered this earth. But well, to the victory goal is full of the war. And we get the right to inherit And well, that's what's happened in Israel. It's been settled by, well, people who are one done each out of everybody else's land. Nobody wanted the Jewish people. Now, well, America, for as great as America was, or said to be, they didn't even want to end Frank. I mean, Things got caught up in immigration for a long time. And well, that's why her visa never got accepted. And that's why she met, well, a very ugly demise and a very cruel demise. Well, you know, people don't like the truth. They don't like hearing facts, but that's what it is. And well, everybody has a right to script itself. And well, everybody knows that, well, there's a lot of distrust, dislike, amongst people who are not Jewish. And well, everybody's left wanting to point the finger. It's Israel. It's that state over there. They're causing all the trouble. But it really is the case that it's Israel. You know, I've seen the pictures. I've seen the videos. And well, what the videos and the pictures don't tell you, or what's not obvious, is who that is out there. And well, let's be honest. It's a lot of men. Mostly all men. I didn't see any Israeli women. I didn't see any Israeli women. Isn't that surprising? If there's these loads of men, where were all the women and children? Were they at home? You know, you can only deceive for so long. What you saw on the video was hard right, very, well, very rigid minded fundamentalists who ascribe to a religion who well, think that they should be able to do whatever they want to the people who were well, already established there. And so there was some encroachment and bad feelings. And well, you know what happens when encroachment happens. People pick the fighting and well, things get petty. And well, when you know, next thing you know, there's death on the horizon. You know, that's what really happened. And you had a mixture of like independence for the Jewish state and the end of Ramadan for the Muslims. And well, you know that when rebel religious people get together, they can't break bread. There always has to be some type of conflict because well, you know, they're idols. They have to fight for who has the most cult people. And so that's kind of what happened. And well, the narrative is that well, it's the state of Israel. You know, it's, well, certain individuals in this Israel, like Benjamin Netanyahu, who everybody knows is a reactionary racist. I mean, the dude is like bombing people, and he really shouldn't even be prime minister. He's like accepted bribes. He's been found guilty of all of those things. Like, the only position he can have legally in the state is to be prime minister, because he's been stripped of all his other posts. What a joke. And well, when you know, I think the problem is, well, a brutal toxic masculinity, like most of the problems on our planet. And well, I looked at the video and the footage, and I saw nothing but orthodox, extremely religious fundamentalist men chanting and screaming and conducting themselves like a bunch of clowns. You know, I didn't see any women. I didn't see staff to fire. You know, I didn't see the youth. I didn't see the future. What I saw was bitter old men still wanting to fight and have crusades 
bad things to the thing yesterday's news. You know, people still want to cry over spilled milk. They want to be crybabies because um, men, they have a problem. They have real serious problems. And they won't go and get those problems fixed. And well, the best way to go about solving these problems is taking their aggressions out on other people. It doesn't matter the age, the gender. They just have to take their aggressions out. And usually they do it through violence. And that's what's occurring in Israel and in Palestine. And sadly, and hopefully soon, cooler heads will prevail. But you know, it needs to be a rearrangement. We need to not see so many men. We need to not see so much toxic masculinity. Maybe what would be helpful is, well, if women negotiated this deal. If actually women were the ones that, well, were in charge. And not the men. Men seem to be too petty, too emotional, too, um, too bitchy. They can't make good deals anymore. You have people that, well, write books about the art of the deal, but can't get a distinctive deal with China, another republic. So maybe it's the case that, well, men are not so good at making deals, and we need new deal makers. You know, get rid of Bibi. Put in Saf Safar. Get rid of, well, the old men in Palestine. Put in some young women, young Palestinian women. I'm pretty sure they can reach a deal. You know, men, you've had your turn. Take a seat. Everybody's sick of the death and destruction that you've brought. And well, what do you know? Times are changing. And well, you can't play the game the same way you used to play it. You can't blame this on religion. You can't blame this on Jews. And you can't even blame this on um, any of the usual cultic religious stuff. No, this is just men behaving badly. Madmen. They've all gone crazy, crazy in the head, I tell you. And well, the next thing that we gotta do as an evolutionary species is just to remove the motherfuckers. And well, if they're gonna leave peacefully, you know what we gotta do.